This is AP Physics B 1979 AP exam question. A ball of mass M is released from rest at the distance H above a frictionless plane inclined at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal as shown above. The, so we have 45 degrees. The ball bounces horizontally off the plane at point P1. So here is point P1. With the same speed, with the same speed with which it struck the plane and strikes the plane again at point P2. In terms of G, so we can use a G and H. Determine each of the following quantities. So for A, for A, I have to find the speed of the ball just before, just after it first bounces off the point P1. So I can use conservation of energy. I can say potential energy here at H height is equal to m g h and all that energy is going to go to the kinetic energy and i'm going to say it's potential energy relative to the point p1 equals to one half m v i'm going to call at this point the velocity one so i can say m g h is equal to one half mv squared and if I solve for v1 I get the square root of 2 gh so the speed of the ball just after it bounces off the plane so at first right before the ball strikes the plane I'm going to delete this for now Right before the ball strikes the plane, it has this velocity. And it's all the way down. But it rebounces at exactly the same velocity. So I know the rebounce is going to be at exactly the same velocity. Then for, um, for B, they ask the time the ball is flat. Um, the time the ball is in flight before between the point P1 and P2. So I need the time it's going to take between P1 and P2. Because the angle is 45 degrees, the ball is going to travel this way and this way, the same distance. So it's horizontal distance and the vertical distance is going to be the same. So I can write this one as L, so that is 45 degrees, that means this is also 45 degrees. Um, so I can write as L cosine of 45, sine of 45, and this is L cosine of 45, which is the same number for both. So or I can say this is some distance D. And this is some um, distance d. So the distance the object is going to travel horizontally and the distance the object is going to be traveling vertically um, is going to be happening over the same time t. I do not know what that time t is equal to. I'm looking for that time t. Um, so, but I'm going to say that distance traveled horizontally is equal to um, average velocity, and that velocity is given, we just found it, is the square root of 2gh times the time. And the distance that traveled vertically is the same distance, and also equal to vertical velocity, y times the time but it's average velocity so if i use this trick that i have used before many times d 
divide the left and right sides by each other. I get 1 on this side. And I get the square root of 2gh times cancel and average velocity on y. So I get average velocity on y is equal to 2gh, square root of 2gh. But your initial vertical velocity, you don't have vertical velocity when it bounces off the inclined plane. You only have horizontal velocity, which doesn't change. But your vertical velocity initially is zero. So if your initial vertical velocity is equal to zero, and your final y velocity, so wherever this y velocity is, divided by 2 is equal to that square root. That means an initial velocity is 0. So that means your final velocity is equal to 2 times the square root of 2gh. So if I want to find the time how long it will take to get to this velocity, I can use the time is equal to the change of the velocity over, um, let me put this one, that was our a. Um, so I can use the change of the velocity over the acceleration. So if I want to find the time, that is going to be equal to the change of the velocity on y over the acceleration. So that will give me the square root of 2gh divided by g. So the time is equal to uh, my square, my g I can write as squared over the square root, underneath the square root. So if I take the common square root, I get the square root 2, the square root of 2h over g. So that's the time that it's going to take for for the um, what was it the ball the mass to to hit the point p2 after it bounces from point p1. For c part, they ask me to find the length l, the distance it travels um, along the incline. So I can find the distance horizontal, so my horizontal distance, this distance, horizontal is L sine 45, it equals to L sine 45 degrees, and equals to average velocity on x, which is um, the square root of 2gh. This is the one that I found earlier. Times the time is going to be traveling forward, and the time I just found out is 2, the square root of 2h over g. So if I simplify my expression, I have d. Well, I don't have d anymore. I can write l. So I have L, instead of sine 45, I can write the square root of 2 over 2 equals 2. Um, 2 can still be in front. 2 square root, I'm just going to write it, everything down. So I have, um, and this was all underneath the square root. So what I have is, everything that is underneath the square root, I'm going to place underneath the square root. I have 2gh times 2h and divided by g. So L is equal to, or L square root of 2 over 2 is equal to 2. 2h times 2h gives me 2h out. And g and g can be cancelled. So what I have is L is equal to 8h, it's 8h over square root of 2. So I 
find what my L is equal to, or I could simplify it to get rid of the radical. So if I multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2 of my expression, I get L is equal to 4H square root of 2. So I could write my answer this way as well. And then for the last part, let's choose different color, orange. Speed of the ball just before it strikes P2. So when they ask you the speed of the ball before it strikes P2, you know um, this velocity we found is the square root of 2gh. And Vy, we found is equal to um, 2 times the square root of 2gh. So if this velocity is 2gh and this velocity is 2 times the square root of 2gh, so the actual velocity at which the ball is falling down at point E is can be found from Pythagorean theorem. So I can say the actual velocity of so the actual velocity is equal to the square root of two g h squared. So that's the um, Pythagorean theorem, right? I have this side and this side, and I'm looking for c. So this one is this one is two g h square root of two g h, and that one is two times the square root of two g h. So I can use my the square root of a squared plus b squared, and the other one is two square root of two g h, and all of that squared. So the velocity at which it hits the point p two is equal to. 2gh, the square root is gone, I square that, and I square this. So I have 4 times 2gh. So the final answer is 10gh. And that is the answer, or the actual speed at which um, the ball is striking when P2. And that was 1979 AP Physics B for response question.